the QYLD covered call ETF is hugely popular for its 12% dividend yield, consistent monthly cash flow. But how much are you really making off that investment? How much would you have investing $100 a month over five years, reinvesting the dividends, or just taking that cash flow? It is an important question that most investors just don't think about because the problem here is the QYLD had some big issues that you're not gonna see until it's already in your portfolio. I'll reveal exactly how much you'd have investing $100 a month in that covered call ETF, the QYLD. I'm also gonna compare it with that same $100 a month investing in another popular monthly dividend stock and show you how to get that same monthly cash flow from a non-dividend stock like Tesla. Before we get started though, you know I've gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Let's get right to it though with that QYLD covered call ETF and it's 12% dividend yield for that monthly cash flow to pay your bills. I'll reveal how much you'd have with that $100 monthly investment next, but the fund uses a covered call strategy on the NASDAQ 100 index. That's the 100 largest companies in that tech heavy NASDAQ. So what it's doing here, it's buying the 100 stocks in this index, mostly large technology companies, and then selling call options against them. And looking at these stocks in the fund, it's a who's who of big tech companies with more than half a billion dollars in shares of Apple alone, along with Amazon and Microsoft. But if you scroll down here, you see that not all of these are tech stocks. You've got some shares of Comcast and Pepsi in here as well because they're part of that NASDAQ 100 index. Now what you don't see here though, you can see here in the fund holdings on its website is the covered call strategy. So what it's selling to offset some of that risk and generate cash. We see this going to the fund website and then clicking to download all holdings. Here we see the 102 stocks held in the fund and its market value, all the way from $847 million in shares of Apple to $7.8 million in shares of Constellation Energy for a total fund assets of just over $6.8 billion. And it's here in that last line that we see that covered call strategy. The fund has sold calls against the NASDAQ index, expiring in a month for a market value of $222 million, which is about 3.3% of the total fund assets. Now, there are a few things here that are important that are gonna help you understand this strategy and where the risks are. First, the fund is selling call options against about 3% of its stocks each month, just enough to produce that cash needed to pay about 12% annualized dividend yield. The cost of selling those calls every month is gonna be a drag on performance, though it's relatively small. Also though, just using that covered call strategy means if the stocks in the NASDAQ jump higher in one month, the fund is gonna miss out on some of that because it sold another investor the right to buy those shares for that cheaper price. And that's why you see the QYLD underperform the NASDAQ tech stocks by so much over the last five years. And we'll uncover a few more problems when we're comparing how much you'd have with that $100 investment versus the other dividend stock, as well as the non-dividend stock later, but let's look at exactly how much you'd have investing in the QYLD every month for the last five years. And now this first chart is gonna be when you're reinvesting those dividends. And that's gonna bring us to the first big problem that most investors just don't realize about the QYLD or any of these monthly dividend ETFs, taxes. Because these ETFs use that option strategy, the dividends are not eligible for qualified tax treatment, but instead are taxed at your regular income tax rate. Now here, I'm assuming the 22% tax bracket for our example, but it could mean thousands more in taxes every single year. Because remember, you pay taxes on dividends every year, whether you take that money, reinvest it, or buy that awesome personalized sauna you saw on TV. And there are two ways that dividends can be taxed, and I'm gonna show you both of those next, but there is only one way to avoid this. Put your dividend stocks in a tax-deferred retirement account, like an IRA. Now that way you won't get taxed every year and you can reinvest the full dividend amount. Back to our chart though, and reinvesting your dividends plus that $100 investment each month, you'd have just over $6,000 over that five years. That's only $36 more than the amount you actually invested. In fact, because the value of these shares has fallen over the last five years, you may be better off taking that money instead of reinvesting it. This chart shows the portfolio value without reinvesting and then the cumulative dividend amount you would have collected investing that same $100 a month in QYLD. Here we see taking those dividends each month, we'd still have nearly $5,000 in shares and will have collected $1,250 in dividends. Now, over that five years of investing, you will have grown your portfolio to 350 shares by reinvesting the dividends or 286 shares if you spent that monthly cash flow. 
Now on the 286 shares, you'd be collecting about $37 a month after taxes. So you can see here, best case scenario, you've got a $5,000 portfolio and will have collected about $1,250 in dividends, but there is a better way. We're gonna compare this next against the most popular monthly dividend stocks, but first, I wanna personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so look for that sign up link below. Now, on the other hand, what if you had taken that $100 and invested in one of the most popular dividend stocks, Realty Income, ticker O, with its 5% dividend yield. And while that dividend yield is a little lower, in fact, more than half that QYLD yield, the money you save in taxes and the stock price is gonna surprise you. Investing $100 a month in realty income and then reinvesting the dividends, you'd have just over $6,300 over the last five years. That's almost $300 more than with that QYLD, and a lot of it comes down to taxes. See, if you hold the shares for more than 60 days, then most dividend stocks are taxed as qualified dividends, and you pay a lower tax rate on that. Here we see the table, and you can see for our example, a married couple making between $83,000 to $178,000 a year, you're only paying 15% tax rate on your dividends instead of that 22% tax rate on income. Even better though, here a lot of people are gonna be able to collect their dividends tax-free if you make under $83,000 married or 41,000 single. So reinvesting those dividends, you'd have 103 shares of realty income after five years of investing that $100 a month. Now, even taking that money each month, you'd still have 95 shares of stock and be collecting a $20 dividend check each and every month. Here's what you'd have collecting those dividends versus reinvesting. You'd have a portfolio of $5,751, plus would have collected 588 in dividends over those five years. That is a total of $6,339 on your $6,000 investment. And remember here, that compares to that $5,000 portfolio in the QYLD with about $1,200 in dividends. So that is a lower dividend cash flow, but a higher total return and still a solid dividend yield. Stick around though next, and I'm gonna show you how to get that same high cash flow as the QYLD with a much higher return. But Nation, the lesson here though is just those high yield monthly ETFs might not always be better because of the higher tax rate and just general underperformance, you might be better off with those monthly dividend stocks or even a quarterly dividend stock compared to the QYLD or some of these other monthly ETFs. And bear with me here because what I'm about to say is gonna seem like a sacrilege to all us dividend investors, but is there a better way to collect that same dividend cash flow without a dividend stock? You still with me there? Because I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that, that you can get the same thing even with shares of Tesla, a non-dividend paying stock. Because here's what your portfolio would look like if you invested $100 a month in Tesla over the last five years and sold enough stock each year to equal that same dividend payment you would have gotten from QYLD. Remember, over that five years investing in the QYLD, we would have collected a combined $1,253 in monthly dividends over that period. So what I did here was assume that same $100 invested each month, but then starting in the 13th month, I sold enough shares of Tesla to exactly equal that amount of cash that you would have collected from the dividend ETF. And one benefit you get from this strategy is that tax rate on long-term capital gains when you sell a stock is the same that you pay for those qualified dividends. If you hold a stock for more than a year, any returns you collect are gonna be taxed at that lower rate. So it really makes no difference if you're paying taxes each year on the dividends you collect or on a stock that you sell to produce that same cash flow. But what you also get is the opportunity to see your portfolio jump higher with a growth stock like Tesla or some of the others we cover here on the channel. And I know what you're thinking. Sure, I can show a huge portfolio return just by cherry picking a runaway stock like Tesla, but the idea works even with the overall market, the S&P 500. Here you see the shares of the QYLD have fallen almost 27% over the last five years, while even realty income has only posted a 28% return. Both are well under the 57% return on the index fund though, the SPY, which could be used to create that same cash flow. Now, all you out there in the nation know I'm not about to just abandon dividend stocks altogether. They still have their place in your portfolio and, and you can avoid those dividend taxes by investing through a retirement account. I just want you to think through the different options. Know that there are different ways to get to those same needs before you jump into just the most popular method. Even that monthly ETF, the QYLD, might have its place for someone that, that just wants that higher yield and is willing to pay for it. With a little extra work though, you can get the same thing through a combination of just regular dividend stocks or, or 
even growth stocks. Get your free weekly market newsletter with the link below or click on the video to the right for all 61 monthly dividend ETFs ranked from best to worst, the best monthly dividends for your money. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.